Hey, what's up everybody? How's it going? Um, I got another gameplay update here for you. We had a bit of a crazy week here. I had some family in town, so it was a little tough trying to find time to work on the game, but uh, I still did manage to get a few things done. Um, you're gonna notice though that I got a little bit sidetracked this week. Um, I worked on projectiles, I worked on abilities, a few new models. Um, so it's a bit all over the place. Hopefully there's some interesting stuff in there. Uh, but yeah, let's not waste any more time. I want to jump right into the video. Here we go. The first thing I did this week was in the character file. So that's the file that has the character that animates, um, doing all that kind of cool stuff. Um, but also it has the character's backpack, which 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 was a, a block out for the longest time. And I've just been meaning to get to it. So so I thought now was a good time to do that. The first thing I did when I was going to go, go update the, the backpack was from this model, I built a high res mesh. Uh, this one is actually around 25,000 triangles. It's a little bit higher than you'd want in a game, or at least for a backpack uh, for my game. The old one was only 200 triangles, so just for, for some reference. Then from there, because this one isn't one we want to have running in the game, I went and built another mesh that is kind of my final in-game mesh. This one's about 500 triangles, and it's, it's special in a number of different ways compared to these two because I've actually UV'd it. So by UV'd it, I mean I've basically taken out each of these little shells here you can see these lines on here in each section i have selected and i've actually unwrapped that into 2d so what that lets me do is actually you can see here underneath there's actually a texture and i can because i've unwrapped this 3d object into 2d space now i can actually apply a texture to it and you also notice like this shell here is purple for some reason it's a, it's different than all those other shells that's actually because I have two shells on top of each other. And what I'm doing here is actually mirroring the texture for the side of the backpack. So I'm able to use this, the texture for the side of the backpack twice. That's a trick that I use all the time to just be a little bit more efficient with my textures um, and just kind of get the most out of every pixel there. Here you can see the backpack model that we just made in the game with my tinting system applied. And backpacks in my game represent abilities that the player can find. And I have those sort of color coded to kind of give you an idea of what that ability is going to be before you pick it up. The green backpacks are movement abilities. The blue backpacks are defensive abilities. And these red backpacks are offensive abilities. And there you can see when I walk over it, it gives you, um, it shows you a little icon of what it's going to do. And I actually updated some of these icons. So I kind of now know what, what each ability is going to do before I pick it up. So yeah, I did a lot of ability work um, and I want to show you, the first one I want to show you is this guy here. This one's pretty cool. So you use this, you walk up to an enemy and it bounces between enemies that are nearby. So it's a really good ability to use when there's lots of enemies, but not such a good ability if you only run into one enemy at a time. Because each time it bounces, it's going to do damage. And this one actually does a lot of damage. And then because I like to reuse everything I can, I actually took that same code and applied it to a new weapon type. The same idea, if I shoot the weapon at them, it's gonna bounce between the enemies if they're nearby. So it's really good if there's a bunch of enemies. This one does very, very little damage, but yeah, if it bounces, it's actually gonna do really good AOE damage. The next ability I think is really cool. I just did this one a couple days ago. I call it the hook shot. So you basically shoot out this plunger and it pulls you towards whatever you hit. I think it, you have to hit a prop or like I think a friendly character it'll work on. This one's just another cool, it's a, a green backpack so you know it's a movement ability. So it launches you around, it's, it's really cool. So if you miss, nothing happens, it just comes right back to you. But if you hit something, it's a cool way to move across the level really quickly. Yeah, I like how that one, I, I think it's going to let you play the game very differently than, um, and that's kind of the goal with all these abilities. I want to make sure each of these abilities lets you play the game very differently. So yeah, continuing along the lines of reuse, because I'm all about recycling stuff, um, I took that exact same code and kind of tweaked it a little bit and made an, a fishing hook. So I can shoot at an enemy and pull them towards me. So it's kind of like a, if you if you're a Dota player, it's kind of like Pudge from Dota. And yeah, it's really cool. Let's see. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else that I want to show you. Oh yeah, I tidied up some other abilities. So these, these all work now. This is like a ground AOE slam. 
this shoots out, kind of creates a wall. So you can use it to protect yourself or trap enemies that are running away. Yeah, that's the that's the jump that you guys have seen before. Oh yeah, I redid the shield ability, the shield ability, so I tried a new shader in here. I'm not sure if I'm really happy with it. It feels a bit too sci-fi to me. I think it's really just the hex grid. Maybe if I just got rid of that, it would feel okay. But that's just like a shield that like pro enemy projectiles won't go through. Oh yeah, I also did this. This is all kind of reusing that same uh, tech we saw before where it just, it makes like a, it's, it's like a fissure, a line of these uh, tires that kind of can, you can use to split up enemies or trap them. And then I think you've seen the other abilities. You have like the turret thing. It's really cool. It'll actually, here, if we bring it down here, like you just place it in your enemies and it'll start shooting them. I don't think those enemies actually take damage, so they will be there. He's going to be there a long time. You got this ability here, which I don't really like the model anymore, but this is kind of like uh, shells in Mario Kart, where like it's a shield, but they can just kill one of those little shields, and then you've got kind of a gap in your armor. Um, I think that's all of them. Oh, you have a healing station too. That's right. That one's still a block out, so I'll have to get to that one eventually. Oh yeah, one last thing. I don't think I showed you guys. I did this a couple weeks ago, but I've applied it to 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 abilities and weapons now. Normally, I guess you'd walk up to to like a ramp and you'd be you'd be firing straight into it. Now I actually have. I'm basically drawing. I'm ray casting down from the character and checking the normal of the mesh that's below it and rotating the projectile point, spawn point, based on that normal. So now I can fire up or downhill um, without having to, without it always just like firing into the wall. Because before you just run up the hill and you couldn't, you would never fire up. So that works with abilities also, because they kind of are all driven from the same projectile spawn point. So that system is working really well. Um, you can shoot up or down. And this system also works with placing abilities. So you can see here with the turret, it actually reorients itself based on the normal of the mesh below it. Um, and it will be red if you can't place it, like if it's inside of an object, or blue if it's a valid placement. So then you can drop it and you can see the turret is properly oriented to the surface it's sitting on. I also did a bit more work on uh, prototyping some new enemies. Um, and I liked that fish hook ability so much that I decided to try it on, uh, on an enemy. Let's see if we can find one. Oh, here we got two. So it's a really crummy block out. But yeah, I think it's already actually really fun. They try to hook you and then attack you. And it's kind of funny how they, they hook each other. I really like that. It makes them feel kind of goofy. So I'll, you know, pretty soon I'll probably go and try to make a, uh, make a, a new model for these guys. Let me know what you guys think would be cool. I'm kind of thinking a frog that would like shoot its tongue out at you or something. But yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll definitely uh, take it into consideration. I also worked on one other enemy type. Um, he's a little bit rougher. Um, I call him the Waver, and he he's also one of those like really early prototype blockouts that he kind of moves in a sine wave pattern to, to make it a little bit harder to shoot. Oh, I'm going to hook him. Um, I... I'm not so sure about this guy. I like how he moves, but uh, he's really buggy right now. <laughs>